This is the Brother Henry and You Show, where you can be inspired, uplifted, and edified through the Word of God. Enjoy today's program. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, he says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. I believe that's what's, that's God's will for our life today. He wants to give you an expected end. If you're praying to know the will of God, I believe you can only find His will when you get on your knees and ask the Lord, Lord, what is your will for my life? What is it that you want me to do? Father, I do not know what that expected end is, but Lord, I pray that you will bring me to it. Um, it's God's desire to do that for you today. God bless you, this is Brother Henry Harris. Welcome to the Brother Henry and You Show. I'm so delighted you took this opportunity to watch. Pray what will be said today will be a blessing to you. And before we turn it over to Brother Phil Clayton, I'd like to say a special prayer for you. Lord, we thank you today for your power. Thank you for your love, Father. Lord, you're doing so many awesome things in our life, Lord. One writer said, if I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't thank you enough for all the marvelous and great things you've done in our life. Lord, we appreciate you for waking us up this morning, giving us peace of mind, giving us strength, giving us keeping power, giving us endurance. Lord, we just give you the praise. I pray, Lord, as Brother Phil shares, Lord, the Lord's laying on his heart that it will be a blessing to your people. That will walk away from this video, Lord, with hope and assurance um, in you, Lord. That they can lift their heads up, Lord. That there are more um, than conquerors through you, Lord. The Lord will give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So at this time, we'll turn it over to um, Brother Phil Clayton. Well, Henry, thanks for this opportunity. Yeah. I really appreciate it. And You know, it's kind of interesting, the scripture that you just read. Mm -hmm because he knows the thoughts that he has for us. Well, he's known us before the foundation of the earth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I always found the scripture, he says, no greater love has a man mm -hmm. than to lay down his life for his friends. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's we say a lot of nice things, mm -hmm. but usually we don't follow through all the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, Jesus turned around right after he said that, and he followed through with mm -hmm. what he said. He said, no greater love. So he showed us no greater love because he turned around and laid down his life for all of us. Amen. You know, and I've been reading your comments on Facebook, and there's a lot of stuff on there, and there's a lot of stuff I just kind of passed by. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I've been reading your comments about who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and we don't realize who we are, and but there are stipulations to who we are. Mm -hmm. You know, like Jesus said, no greater love has a man than to lay down his life for his friends. He turned around and he laid down his life for us. Mm -hmm. and But he made a contingency that he said, you are my friends if yeah. Yeah. you obey my commandments. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to me... That's what it comes down to. Well, to me, that's that's the hard part of being the Christian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Saying what I'm is easy mm -hmm. <laughs> you know i'm a christian but then when i carry that out in my actions mm -hmm. my reactions the mm -hmm. thing that happened to me mm -hmm. and if i will obey his commandments mm -hmm. you know it's it's kind of like um you know if you turn to mark 11 i'm gonna use this bible it's got bigger print <laughs> <laughs> but if you turn to mark 11 Yeah, I had a guy that read this in Sunday school, and I just thank God. I was at the point of just like, good grief, man, get over it. <laughs> and, you know, then it hit me one day. Mm -hmm. And it said, so Jesus, they, and kind of preface this story, they'd been to the temple, and this is when Jesus chased the money changers out and mm -hmm. told them this is the house of prayer. Mm -hmm. But on the way, he had seen a fig tree. Mm -hmm. and he knew it wasn't in season but he went over there to see if there's any fruit well there wasn't any fruit and he cursed the fig tree mm -hmm. 
Well, the next day they're coming back and the apostles look over there and said, man, that fig tree is dead. It's just withered to the roots. And how can this be? Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, answered and said to them, have faith in God. Mm. Said, for assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. And then he says, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, mm -hmm. forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. Mm -hmm. And you know, I look at the church, and there's a lot of unforgiveness in the church. Mm -hmm. You know, sad. a lot of hard feelings, a lot mm -hmm. of jealousy, anger, malice. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was reading that, and, and it coincided, but you know, another thing people do is they say, well, if it's God's will. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, he didn't bring that into the scripture. Mm -hmm. Did he screw up? <laughs> I think he put exactly the words he wanted to put in there. He says, if you doubt not in your heart. Mm -hmm. How many times did when people came and there was a healing, mm -hmm. he said, your faith has made you whole. Mm -hmm. You know? And so it was the faith that they had in what? Mm -hmm. They had in him. Mm -hmm. As, you know, they believed that he was the son of God. Amen where a lot of people didn't, and we have that same problem today. Mm -hmm. That we don't, I don't know that we always truly believe that he was the Son of God, mm -hmm. because we kind of wonder if he can really do something. Mm -hmm. You know, in Matthew 6, uh, 6, 14 and 15, and this has been on, on my heart, it's just, when you, when you look at some of the scriptures, and, and it's, why are we so slow to get it? And, you know, you read 14 and 15, it says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Hmm. Now, I'm no theologian. <laughs> uh -huh. But like you said, that's pretty plain and simple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Doesn't take a great mind to figure that one out. Uh -huh. But if I don't forgive, then he's not going to forgive me. Mm -hmm. I can feel as good about myself as I want, but if mm -hmm. I don't, if I've got, uh, it says if you say you love God and you hate your brother, mm -hmm. you're a liar. Mm -hmm. The truth isn't in you. Mm -hmm. There's no light. Mm -hmm. And... So if I if God doesn't forgive me, you know, he might hear a prayer. Mm -hmm. I mean, he'll he'll probably hear the prayer, mm -hmm. but whether he'll answer or not is really questionable to mm -hmm. me. So we've got two different places that it says, you know, hey, if you don't forgive, God ain't going to forgive you. Mm -hmm. So why why do we struggle so much mm -hmm. with unforgiveness? I mean, I've had people say, well, I can't forgive. Mm -hmm. No, well, that's not a true statement either. You can forgive. It's mm -hmm. just whether you choose to forgive or not. Mm -hmm. And, you know, back, oh, it's early 90s, I worked for a guy, and and we had an altercation, and, mm -hmm. and he got mad at me, and I was, had worked on commission for a little over four years, and, mm -hmm. and two months after the altercation, he just quit paying me. Mm -hmm. And I would remember driving by his office and I'd just go, I don't want to get mad. Mm -hmm. I just want to let it go. I just want to forgive him. Mm -hmm. Just let it go. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I basically had to start over making an income. Mm -hmm. And so he, he played guitar. He could write songs. He could, I mean, he could write something up. And he'd asked me before our little mess up, he said, well, what do you think of this? And I said, well, you know, you're never going to know till you submit it to a publisher mm -hmm. and, you know, find out from somebody that really knows what you're doing and everything. Mm -hmm. And so after a little altercation, I mean, I, he wanted me out of the office and <coughs> and uh, I'd go by, I don't know how many times I went by and just said, you know, God, I don't want to be angry. I don't want to be mad. I just want to let it go. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and about a year later, I'm sitting at McDonald's on Main Street one one day, mm -hmm. and he comes walking in mm -hmm. with some other guy, and and I just feel God tell me to go say hi to him. Mm -hmm. And of course, my thought was, that's the last person in the world I want to talk to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know, God just kept getting go say hi to him, go say hi to him, and finally I just said, okay, I'll go say hi to him. I walked <laughs> over. Said, hey, how you doing? And he introduced the guy to me, and the guy was a publisher. Hmm. And he had won like Songwriter of the Year out of Nashville and done, had done some other stuff. And and I said, well, hey, remember who encouraged you first when you get rich and famous? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, just kind of joke with him. I remember walking out of McDonald's that day mm -hmm. and going, Phew. well, that was <laughs> tough, Lord. Uh, yeah. And I've been there before. We were, my wife and I, we had a Bible study that we had every Thursday night, and we were getting ready to leave one Thursday night, and the phone rang, and my son answered the phone, mm -hmm. and I said, who is it? And he said, I don't know. And so I got on the phone, and it's this guy. Mm -hmm. And he said, hey, I just wanted to call and thank you for being so nice to me the other day. He said, I didn't deserve that. Mm -hmm. Henry, I looked at that phone, and I thought, God, you're so awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just thought, you know, that would have been the last call I would have ever expected. Mm -hmm. No matter what happened, mm -hmm. this guy would have been the last person I would have thought that would have humbled himself mm -hmm. to make that phone call. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it taught me, though, the importance of forgiveness mm -hmm. and how, how it not only impacts me, mm -hmm. but it impacts that other person. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it really doesn't impact that person. They're just going on their merry little way and we're mm -hmm. sitting there stewing over what happened mm -hmm. and they, they don't think a thing about it. And we're the ones that are in misery. Mm -hmm. And I've seen people, I honestly believe that, that they have been so angry and so frustrated at somebody mm -hmm. that it's caused them to get sick. Mm -hmm. And so God doesn't cause that. Mm -hmm. You cause it yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you said when you talked about you ha he has an end for us. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. called eternal life, and mm -hmm. it's called heaven. Mm -hmm. And Speaking that's where he wants to see us. And, mm -hmm. and we make that choice every day of whether we're going to do the things that he wants us to do. Mm -hmm. You know, because if you... I look at the two great commandments. He says, love God with all your heart, mm -hmm. soul, mind, and strength. Mm -hmm. And love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. Which one's the hardest one of those? <laughs> Probably loving your neighbor. <laughs> is it really loving your neighbor or is it loving you? I don't know. <laughs> sometimes, it, sometimes if the person don't love themselves, it's kind of hard for them to love other people. I've, I've heard people tell me that, but I don't know how true that is. Well, that if a person don't love themselves, how can they love other people? If you love yourself and if you love your neighbor as yourself, you're not going to go you're steal gonna, from him. Are yeah. <laughs> Uh -huh. You're not gonna, you know, you know, you're not gonna do a lot of things, mm -hmm. but it really, if you don't love yourself, and and I think we all struggle with that, mm -hmm. you know, because we don't want to be self-righteous, mm -hmm. you know, we don't, and I think sometimes those are words that Satan has thrown in mm -hmm. to keep us from realizing who we are. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like your prayer. You know, it's just like, man, when are we gonna get it? Mm -hmm. When are we going to really believe, he says, that we're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? Mm -hmm. I mean, you think about it. I mean, it's overwhelming to me mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we're the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're a child mm -hmm. of God. We're a son or a daughter of God. Mm -hmm. That we are heirs and co-heirs with Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. I used to think, uh, Brother Phil, that... Um when I became a Christian, I had to earn my righteousness by my works, and I need to do more for God, and I need to pray a little longer, and I and then the Lord died, it just died, he just put it all, you, know, you ever had those experiences, it just mm -hmm. hits you, he said, son, you're already righteous, you're already holy, all you gotta do is just walk in, it all goes back to your true identity in him, knowing who you are in him. Right, and I don't think that most people know that. Mm-hmm. If they if they do they don't act like it. Yeah. <laughs> you know because you know that's a that's one thing I was looking and you know 
I had a thought here, and I said, said so you say you're a Christian. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I said earlier, that's an easy thought mm -hmm. to say I'm a Christian. It is. But, you know, like being a doer of the Word and not a hearer only, mm -hmm. so that means that you're, you know, as a Christian, mm -hmm. and I'd have, i got to look for this, but, well, First Peter 2, I think, is where... It says, therefore, laying aside all malice. Mm -hmm. What is that? Hate and discontent? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Envy? Mm -hmm. All deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. Mm -hmm. You know, one day I was reading, reading that, and is gossip evil speaking? Gossip? Mm -hmm. I would think so. You know? So we're supposed to get rid of that. We're not supposed to be talking about other people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I had a friend one time, and and she was Catholic, and she was going to confession, and she thought, well, you know, I really haven't done anything bad or mm -hmm. haven't killed nobody or anything. Mm -hmm. Well, the priest started taking her through the Ten Commandments. says, have you killed anybody? Mm -hmm. And she said, well, no, I haven't killed anybody. He says, have you gossiped? <laughs> well, as soon as he said, have you gossiped, she was convicted. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it's put it in a whole different perspective because mm -hmm. what are we, we're killing them spiritually. Mm -hmm. We may not be killing them physically, mm -hmm. but spiritually we're killing them. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we're supposed to get rid of that. Mm -hmm. And it says, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times, I mean, I think we find it all easy to read the words and then not put them into practice. Mm -hmm. You know, be a doer of the word and not, and, and not a hear only. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that's where we deceive ourselves mm -hmm. because we say, well, you know, yeah, I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and James, it, it uh, It talks about 1, 23 through 25. It says, For if anyone is the bearer of the word, hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. Oh, he looks like <laughs> Yeah. And so, and it says, If anyone... And then verse 26 says, If anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one, this one's religion is useless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you think about, I think about some of those things, and, you know, when you talk about bridling your tongue, and it tells us later in here, it says, if, if you can bridle your tongue, you can control your whole body. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, if that's the case, there's a lot of us got an issue. Mm -hmm. Because if we can bridle our time, we can control the whole body, we wouldn't have, you know. I look at people, you know, with tattoos mm -hmm. and body piercings and, you know, and uh, people that smoke, mm -hmm. people that mm -hmm. drink. You know, it's not my job to judge them. All my mm -hmm. job is is to share the love of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so if I share the love of Christ, you know, then God will take care of the rest. Mm -hmm. It's not my job. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was talking to a guy, and we were, he had told me right after the tornado, a church had built him a shed. Mm -hmm. And he had all of his stuff the in the one this. one in Uh-huh. Okay. okay. And he had all this stuff in this shed they'd build him and give to him. Mm -hmm. And there were some guys working next door at his neighbors, and he said, yeah, I said, that's the same group. They're going to tear down that shed because it's kind of leaning like this. Mm -hmm. And he said, they're going to tear that down. They're going to build them a new shed. Mm -hmm. And about that time, we seen one of the guys pull some cigarettes out and light up <laughs> a cigarette. Mm -hmm. 
he made the comment and he says, oh, I hope that's not one of them men from the church. No. And I said, well, you know, I said, the uh, way I look at that, mm -hmm. is that any worse than <laughs> this? <laughs> you know, if I got a problem with a little gluttony, mm -hmm. is that any, is his smoking any worse than what I've got? I said, I don't have the right to look at him and, mm -hmm. and say, hey, he's wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah, we're all right. wrong because really it's this is the temple of God so whatever mm -hmm. we do we're doing to the temple of God mm -hmm. so it's like my wife says he said God said he wanted you to be the temple not the mansion mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know so the things of God you know what I see is that we need to look at what God says and then put that into practice mm -hmm. you know because he talks to us all the way through about to think more highly of others than mm -hmm. we do ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, how many times do we do that? Mm -hmm. But that's loving our neighbor as ourself. If we love our neighbor as ourself, then we're going to put him mm -hmm. on the same level that we are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just, you know, the fruits of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. When you start looking at the fruits of the Spirit, how much of that do you see in people? Not much. You know, it's it's like we were talking earlier, you know, it's just like, you know, I was raised in a Baptist church, mm -hmm. became Catholic, and then got into the charismatic renewal in the Catholic church. Mm -hmm. And most people look at you and go, what's that? <laughs> well, it's just like Pentecostal. Mm -hmm. We prayed in tongues, we laid hands on people to receive healing, and... Mm -hmm. and you know, people say, Catholics do that? Well, you know, we, we're quick to judge. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I've met good people in all churches. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm convinced it's like, you know, if we don't reach out to the people sitting right beside of us in church on Sunday, mm -hmm. that person could be going to hell or it could mm -hmm. be us. Mm -hmm. Maybe they mm -hmm. need to reach out to us and mm -hmm. be sensitive to the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and reach out. Mm -hmm. You know, because the Holy Spirit, you know, when I looked at that too, when they said, look, he, Jesus looked at his apostles and said, look, it's better for you that I leave. Mm -hmm. And there, I'm going to paraphrase this, he says, you're nuts. Yeah. <laughs> said, how could it be better for us that you leave? Because you got the words of life, you're the bread of life. It can't be better for us if you leave. And he says, if I don't leave, mm -hmm. I can't send the comforter. Mm-hmm. And the Comforter is going to guide you and teach you in all things. Mm -hmm. where, where did we let that drop? Where did we let that ball drop that the Holy Spirit will guide us and teach us? You know, that we look, we look to men mm -hmm. to do that instead of God. Amen. We look to men to, do, to fulfill things in us. Mm -hmm. You know, we go to church, we listen to a sermon, mm -hmm. we and sing three or four or five songs, mm -hmm. and then we come home and think, I've done my obligation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what they call it in the Catholic Church, your holy day of obligation. Mm -hmm. I see that isn't any different in other denominations. Mm -hmm. They, the people still feel that obligation. Mm -hmm. You know, you're yeah. faithful. Uh -huh. You're a faithful person. Mm -hmm. No matter what you're doing, anywhere else, mm -hmm. but to really show that you're faithful is you're there Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday, mm -hmm. and then you're faithful. Mm -hmm. But you could be somewhere else mm -hmm. doing the same thing mm -hmm. that they don't even know about, but yet they say, well, they're not very faithful. Mm -hmm. You know, because I go to different different places and mm -hmm. do different things, and, mm -hmm. you know, that's... Yeah, it's kind of like you. I see that in you. Is that's your heart's desire mm -hmm. is to to talk about Jesus. Amen. <laughs> you know, I don't, people ask me about a sports team. I'm totally lost. Really? <laughs> I I just you know I've just never had this. that desire. I'm mm -hmm. just yeah. You know, I just seem to sit and talk about Jesus mm -hmm. as I would sit and talk about sports. Mm -hmm. You know, I know I know more about Jesus than I do any any <laughs> team. Uh -huh. And you know, but that's that's why I think a lot of the stuff in here is we need to get down to the roots of 
of what it really ta talks to us about mm -hmm. the forgiveness mm -hmm. get rid of any, get rid of the malice and envy mm -hmm. and evil speaking and mm -hmm. and show that we're Christians mm -hmm. you know that we are the body of Christ mm -hmm. and that we're something that he can be pleased with mm -hmm. you know and, and it's like you you commented earlier you know you used to think you had to do stuff to earn mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't you know he's he's already paid the price mm -hmm. you've already <laughs> earned it like mm -hmm. you said and it's you can't do any more than what mm -hmm. he's done Amen. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like, and that's what I see a lot of people. I talk to people all the time, and I was talking to a lady one day, and I was, was actually at a church, mm -hmm. and she was in the kitchen area, and she was getting some stuff ready, and I said, well, do you teach Sunday school class or anything like that? And she said, oh, no, I'm not worthy to do something like that. <laughs> and I said, well, why don't you just slap Jesus in the face? You said that to her? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she looked at me, and I mean, it sounds kind of cruel, but she looked at me and said, I would never do that. No. <laughs> and I said, well, you just did. Mm -hmm. Because basically you're saying that the price he paid mm -hmm. did not make you worthy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, I, and I, I mean, I've done that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure you've done it. Yeah, I'm not good enough. <laughs> yeah, but what did what more does he need to do to make you good? Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, he's already done it. He said, no greater love has a man lay down his life for his friends. Mm -hmm. It goes right back to what we started with. Mm -hmm. The love of God. It, You know, there's that song they sing at church it's, uh, where the, if the ocean were ink and, mm -hmm. and every quill was a pen and and you know you couldn't empty the ocean mm -hmm. because with his just r talking about his love mm -hmm. you know when are we going to get that we can't earn it he's already paid the price we mm -hmm. don't have to do anything to earn it mm -hmm. i mean it's just naturally ours Amen. when we receive him and we walk in his commandments and obey his commandments mm -hmm. and you know that i see that the church you know not not receiving that and i think sometimes we we keep each other in bondage mm -hmm. by the things that we say mm -hmm. you know it's i was talking to a friend the other day and he said you know it's just like god had started showing him something and he said if you pray for peace mm -hmm. you're asking for something outside of yourself Mm -hmm. that's already inside you mm -hmm. <laughs> you know if you're if you're a Christian then that's it's already in you mm -hmm. Amen. and so you're asking for something outside and he's you should ask it from the for to come up from the inside mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know, I've been thinking about that and, that's a good and thought. he's huh that's a good thought well yeah and I, I just thought man that I, I like that mm -hmm. you know if you and he says if you ask for healing you're asking for something outside. You've already been given healing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you you got to receive it. Mm -hmm. And he said, but you're asking, if you're asking for healing, you're asking more for a miracle mm -hmm. than you are for healing. Because mm -hmm. he said, you're, you've already received it. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, and we try to explain away because, you know, Henry, if I pray for you, mm -hmm. and I pray that God heals you and nothing happens, mm -hmm with my eyes mm -hmm. I don't see no change mm -hmm. and you maybe don't feel no change mm -hmm. then I I'll say well it must not have been God's will Henry mm -hmm. <laughs> better luck next time yeah. <laughs> you know harsh harsh words <laughs> well isn't that isn't that how we think though yeah pretty much I mean we want to explain it away or give God an out mm -hmm. give God an out for something not happening mm-hmm that's that's what we typically do. I see it over and over. I mean, I've watched I've uh, watched people be prayed for, and I'll be walking back with other people, and somebody will say, "They say that's the worst kind of cancer you can have. I hope they make it." Well, <laughs> oh <my God>. really? <clears throat> well, they'll say that to another person that's beside them. 
But they just got done praying. But they just got done praying, so they just it goes, negated. It goes back to what you said about doubt. Yeah. You're going to pray, believe what you're praying. Yeah. He said it will be granted. You just confess doubt over what you just went up there and said you're going to pray for that person for. Uh-huh. And so if you, you know, you're better off to sit in your seat mm-hmm. and not budge, mm-hmm. no matter how much you think of that person, mm-hmm. if you're not going to believe for their total healing. Mm-hmm. You know, just stay away. Yeah.